When I first interviewed George Santos and Robert Zimmerman on The Point in October, we focused on the issues in the congressional campaign. But a look back may have more to reveal about the enigma that is George Anthony DeVolder Santos. Please enjoy this encore presentation. Voters on Long Island and parts of Queens are saying goodbye to three-term Congressman Tom Swasey. Robert Zimmerman and George Santos want to replace him. They're here and ready to rumble. Okay. <laughs> Good to be with you, Marsha. Good to be with you too, George. Good to be here. Good so to be here, look, Robert. when I went out to your district, mm -hmm. uh, people told me that their number one concern is crime. If you get elected, what can you actually do? To help them. Well, I'll tell you what I will do. Uh, first of all, the reason I'm such a, this is such a strong issue and such an important issue to me is because I see it impacting everyone throughout our district, either in terms of their fear or their concerns about hate crimes or actual physical violence. But crimes. what can so you do what, in what Washington? What you can do as a, as a member of a member of Congress is you can stand up for strong and safe gun safety laws. That's essential to get the flow of illegal gun weapons off our streets, to get rid of the assault weapon, to put an assault weapon ban in place, to get rid of ghost guns. There's major steps you can take on gun safety legislation. I'm a strong advocate of that. Regrettably, George is not. Furthermore, we can focus on reinvesting in our police. That's essential for the federal government to do, to give them the tools and support they need. I've been endorsed by former New York City Police Commissioner Bill Bratton because of my leadership on issues of public safety, standing up for our police, and standing up against gun violence. Mr. Santos, what would you do in Washington? Gun violence? Gun laws? I, I'm what? glad to see that now you agree that we need to bring federal dollars for, for our law enforcement it's been, officers. It's been an issue I've worked on for years. Uh, well, the reality is the Democrats decided it was the appropriate thing to defund the police in New York City in the, mid, in the midst of riots that were taking place in our city, where really you can go to jail for wanting to shop at Macy's, but if you looted and burned to the ground, that was okay. Right. So the reality is, is I want to go to Congress and make sure that we secure secure uh, federal funding for law enforcement officers to make sure they understand that as rogue municipalities want to defund them, we'll come in and we'll supply them with the funds they need to do a better job. What That's about what, stronger gun laws? Well, the reality is, is criminals don't follow the law. How about reforming the, the failed bail reform in New York State that I want to work with my local uh, elected... Uh, but George, we have a responsibility to address the gun violence that's a pandemic throughout our country. Robert, we could close the criminals background... Criminals don't follow we could, the law. Let's we just could, be We could honest close the loopholes and background checks sure. so people can't buy guns and, so people can't buy guns by, avoid, by avoiding background checks. And then we, we don't, get and then we don't keep them in jail and we, release them we, back we, we out we on the streets. Could, that's what your party did. Very exactly. That's why I took on my party to make changes in bail But you gave money to Todd Kaminsky to become DA in you can, County, you, the George, bill. you can duck this. You can duck this issue all You're you want. You're distracting the people you, from the reality. You still allow assault weapons. You won't even support an assault weapons ban. You won't support getting ghost guns off our street. I will not George, harm. This is a pandemic. Robert, I, I won't harm law-abiding citizens of the United States because there are gun laws in place. If we just enforce the laws as they stand, that's what needs to be done. We need to be George, tough on crime. Your accurate. party is not tough George, on crime. You can talk about my you, party, but it's up to us and you the leadership come from we bring the team to Congress. That you'll just be and a rubber stamp for Nancy Pelosi's agenda, Robert. I know Let's the have Point. I know the Let's have points, that George, understanding. But here's the reality. I meet so many parents who are worried about their children going through more gun safety drills than fire drills I meet children whose parents and get I'll killed going to work, being pushed on subways by criminals that your party failed to put in jail. You know something? This is not, it should not be a partisan issue. I stand with I agree. Many, I stand with many for fixing our bail reform laws. I've called for it. I took on my own party over you that. You supported but Todd Kaminsky, who authored the bill. He actually advocated changes in it. But, but he here's authored the, here's the original okay, bill. Okay, gentlemen, no, but gentlemen, gentlemen we've got to get to another we Okay, get to but Marsha, it comes down to this. If we wanted to play a leadership role in Congress, we, on, a, a stand, we need to have an honest discussion we, about it. No, we also have to take, put strong gun safety laws in place. I'll do it. You won't. Of course. Mr. Not. Santos, let me ask you this question. The number two issue in your district, because I have been out there talking to them, is the economy. I wonder what you think is causing it, and what will you do to help stop the inflation that is really hurting everybody? Well, how about let's stop the war on uh, energy, right? It starts there. On January 20th, 2021, Joe Biden signed a pile of executive orders, one including to shut down energy uh, uh, independence in this country, shutting down the construction of the Keystone. So are you pipeline. saying that we should start drilling on public lands? I, absolutely. 
We, we're the most responsible nation to extract, oil, uh, extract res, uh, natural resources in the world. We have local EPA standards, state EPA standards. We have federal EPA standards. You Instead think of we going should drill to OPEC, on public lands? I think we have to be very careful. We should not be, we should not be drilling, certainly on our shorelines, for sure. And we have to, in fact, in the short term, deal with domestic drilling. We're up to 12, billion, 12 million barrels a day. That's almost a national record for oil drilling. But here's the point that counts. If we're going to deal with the economic crisis that we're facing, the inflation we're facing, we've got to work in a bipartisan way. It's like the bipartisan so infrastructure. So how are you going to put more money back in your constituents' Here's how you do it. Pockets. First, you fight to restore the state and local tax deduction. So, Secondly, I'm in agreement with you but, on but that. But here's where you're not. We agree I, on something. That's Great. right. But then we have the bipartisan <laughs> infrastructure bill that was essential for protecting our water quality on Long Island and your Queens, cleaning up contaminated plumes, Fixing our roads, you oppose that. I never said I opposed the you bill. You said that in front of the Building and Trades Union. I never union. said George, I opposed the bill. You know why we call this the third so congressional district? not on record. George, you know why we call this, you know we call this the third congressional district? You've got three positions on every issue. Oh, come on, I mean, Robert. The prescription drug bill that was put in place, you condemn that as well. The bill to lower the cost of prescription drugs for our seniors, capping insulin at $35 a month for the first time in history. Capping Amongst all the pork that was in the bill that would exacerbate inflation, like you want to George, add $50,000 50, a year uh, as George, students are never going to be a perfect. Come on. There's never going to be a perfect bill. Well, but the that's question because is going Congress to be, isn't willing to put perfect bills out, Robert, and you know right. that you'll be part of that problem with Nancy. George, the problem is when we put, don't put our senior citizens first, we put partisan talking points first. I've always yeah, I, put senior citizens. So how are you, you support, going to put more money back in your constituents' pockets besides saying you want to drill on, on public lands? Well, you simply stop cutting wasteful spending. Marsha, in the, in the Inflation Reduction Act that Robert loves and supports so much, we, there was a bill, there was a, a, t a line item there for $20 million for gender studies and primates in Pakistan. How does that further or mitigate inflation. We so you're going to take away funding. funds. You're going to take away funds to protect our water supply, clean up contaminated plumes, protect the Long Island Sound because there's part of the bill you don't like. I'm sure there are parts of the bill I don't like as well. Then the fight end of the for day, a better bill. How about day, us being bipartisan and working for a better bill? How about delivering for our constituents? By the way, look at Social Security. That's a new issue on the shopping block. You advocated privatizing Social no, Security I did not, in 2020 oh, when you ran for Congress in 2020. You have on to have your an website. honest discussion. You want to apologize this. for that position? That's your call. But you advocated privatizing Social Security. That ends it as we know it. We've got to protect our seniors by protecting Medicare and Social Security, not ex not put them on the chopping block because you want to protect tax cuts for the top corporations. I don't want to protect tax cuts for the top corporate. Come on, Robert. So Look, you, you support, have to have an honest decision. Did you decision. support Joe Biden when he you, advocated you a minimum have corporate an, tax? You have to have an honest decision. Okay, I've always been for taxing corporations higher. I'm how about Joe Biden's proposal? Put them to tax, to how about Joe taxes? Biden's proposal to tax corporations at a minimum of 15% if they earn over, if revenues of over a billion dollars? advocated for 20%, so you're off the mark. I'm actually for a higher tax bracket for corporations. Then you should be supporting his bill. That his would bill be is bad. I'm not going to support a bad bill, Robert. Joe. That's a, the difference so, is you'll be a rubber stamp for Joe Biden's agenda, actually, and I'll okay, stand up to Joe Biden. Note, I'm going to ask you another question because okay, we, we want to get through some of this. Mr. Zimmerman, you support abortion rights, but do you think it's right in these tough economic times for New York taxpayers to foot the bill for people from out of state to come here and get abortions? I'm very proud of the fact that our state has become a safe haven for those who seek to have a safe and legal abortion. I'm very proud of the fact our state legislature and our governor put this in place. Let's understand what's happening in our nation. Because of the over Overturn, overturning of Roe, that decision being overturned now, people are going, women are going to die because they're going to be they're going to live in states where they can't get a safe and legal abortion. George wants to create a national ban on abortion. That's another lie, Robert. No, I'll, read, I'll read the quote to you from Robert, the island now, George. Yeah, well, when every I journalist wants to misquote every politician running for office. It's, always, it's, it's that George, funny. So let me ask you something. Do you Please. think that in these tough economic times that New York taxpayers, your taxpayers, your district, should be paying to have, give abortions to people who come from out of state? Good idea, bad idea, how do you feel I think that's it? on the prerogative of the legislator if they think that's a good use of the taxpayer dollars. My opinion is it's not. I know that in New York State, Marsha, nothing changes for the women of New York. I've always advocated for exceptions on rape, incest, or life actually, of the mother. Quite to the contrary, and I, quite George, frankly, you, think, advocate, you advocate quite a frankly, I think with no exceptions. I think, quite frankly, you're the party of extreme that wants to advocate for people like myself who were born on the 24th week of gestation to be terminated their life. So I think that's extreme. That's an extreme position, George, Robert. You actually have that honest decision. 
compared abortion to slavery. Oh, you come said on. women. You said women. You said this on video. Women would use rape as an excuse to get I did an abortion. Not, not in that context. Well, George, I said no that I context want you no. Could say the context that. that I wanted was I want a police report to bring the perps to justice. They're criminals. So they but you be said you would not allow rape. You would not allow a woman to get abortion due to rape unless there was a police documentation of it. I That's said, what you said. No, that is not what I said. George, and you that know, is look, a I'm not going to argue with you on Robert. But we have to talk about this. Have an honest discussion. You want to coddle the criminals who rape women in New York State because you support the bail reform laws. George, you Come know on. I don't support Robert, bail you're reform. a national committee man. You've funded you every Bill politician Bradley who wrote that. Yeah, George. All right, we're going to have to leave it right Come there on. for now. We'll have more with our candidates when we come back. <laughs> Lively this. We're back with the two men who want to replace Tom Swasey. Mr. Santos, voters are concerned about the state of our democracy. The January 6th hearings have blamed Donald Trump for his involvement. Fair or not fair? Look, I think it's prerogative of the committee, right? If they, if they have enough corroborated evidence and they want to put that blame on Donald Trump, that's on them. Uh, look. Do you blame Donald Trump? I look at it this way. I, I can't blame one person for every each individual person's individual responsibility on that day. But I would have not gone into the, the Capitol. Let's be very George, honest. George, you defended Donald Trump. Oh, you said God. his speech said to Laura Trump in a TV interview, his speech was Donald Trump at his most awesomeness. You were there at the Stop. He was and energized. You he were was there, an, you were there was at the Stop. rally. You actually, the you actually uh, paid elites. the legal fees. No, I did you, not. You said so once again no, on video. I did not. I can read you the quote. Read the quote all you want. I did not pay a single legal fee. You said you paid the legal fees to get a ton of them out. These were people whose violence, in fact, you even defended their being in the Capitol. These people whose violence was so extreme that police officers were killed and over 100 police officers were injured. Yet, despite that, you posted bail. You got the, you put the, I did put, not post bail for anyone, you paid, Robert. You That's paid their a legal fees to get them you know oh, Here's the quote, George. I'm you glad know to it. share the it with you. The problem with you is, Robert, you want to read quotes all you want. The reality is, quotes. you don't want to be genuine with the American people. That's why the rank and file of every single law, major law enforcement union on Long Island has endorsed me over for you because they know I stand with them. Wait. I don't, I don't vote, I don't bend, George, I don't play when, games, George, I don't you play support political you nuclear support, when you football post, when you pay with the, law enforcement when you pay like legal, you and your party do. When you pay legal fees to get people out of jail who, who attack police I did not and pay kill legal police, fees. you said so publicly. When you say Robert, that, George, you, you, you wanted George, to you're not standing up for guys. Come you on, su Robert. You supported the big lie. You stood up for the, it was, you, you stood supported up for the, the guy who created the bill who made law enforcement officers less safe, who's killed law enforcement all across this state. George, I didn't. George, you know you're, very George, well. you know damn well. Excuse you know, my language. No. Come on, George, now we're going to go to that. George, Jeez. you know very well, and this is critical because it's about our democracy. The fact that you supported the effort to overturn the election. I did not support any effort Let's to go. overturn any election, unlike you, who for 16 years <laughs> denied the 2000 election, saying Al Gore won that race. Here's your quote, November 6, 2020. Robert. The rampant fraud of these elections is frightening. I urge the FBI, CIA, and DOJ to intervene. Stop the counting of illegal votes. You even said when you lost for Congress by 13 percent, the election was stolen from you, too. Robert, when you, when I you never to was. Our, I, I couldn't when you I to undermine our democracy. Tom Swazi two days after the absentee ballots were open. How did that I contend? George, do you have an honest moment inside George, of you ever when George, you're the campaigning? The very idea that you would try to undermine our democracy. And I never undermine our democracy. Do you know why? Because I do live think, the American dream that you and your party you, are trying you defend, to diminish for the next you, generation. You, let me tell you something, George. I never once defended anything. When you, did, I when you support people who attack anything. our police. No, I did not. You did? No, I did not. It's a video it that Newsday posted, George. It wasn't George. my party okay, who supported the riots of New York City and the countless police officers. Here we go with another distraction. There we go again, George. Robert, you're the party of distractions. Let's talk about Inflation is prime, we're move which on really because matter. We, we have to get another question. Okay. So, Mr. Zimmerman, voters in your district are really fed up with the dysfunction in Washington. I am they too. think that politicians are liars. What will you do to change that impression? You know, something the most important thing we can do is try to bring back bipartisan dialogue, bipartisan work. I'm very proud of the fact that even before this campaign began, I've been recognized by Republicans in Congress for working with them in a bipartisan way. But not work, one of them I endorsed with, you. Excuse Mr. Me, Santos. Excuse me. I work with Peter King to, to break a congressional deadlock for the Zaroga 9-11 health bill to help those afflicted with cancer at the site. I've been praised by local Republicans in Nassau County for working in a bipartisan way the pandemic. George, you can't point Name to one. Name one that endorsed you, Robert. Of course not. Peter King endorsed me. What would you do to end dysfunction? The reality is we need fresh new leadership. Robert is more of the old same party. He's been in he's been in politics for 30 years. I'm a private sector guy. I was born and raised in, in abject poverty in this country and only in this country. Does somebody who comes from
from a basement apartment in Jackson Heights, like I did, is able to rise to become a successful business person to then run for United States Congress. I but want solutions. I don't want. want I don't want Michigan. I don't want George, talking points like Robert does all the George, time. Can you I name, don't make a can, living George, off of this. Can you name one Democrat in Congress or one Democratic local official who will give you credit for working in a bipartisan way? You can't name one. North and, Hempstead Town Supervisor she's Jen a Republican. Desena. She's a registered Democrat, she and you ran know as a Republican. Oh, she was a Wilson Pakula. She's a Shame registered you. Democrat, the and you know The bottom line is, this is not a game. Robert, We've got to restore where were you a bipartisan when we were working dialogue. together with Judy Bosworth to end the floodgates that they were trying to install in Great Neck? You I were, were, you I were, were a no show. Closely with her on you were a no show on the issue that would George, have caused mass flooding in North Hempstead. You worked, know it. You asked Judy Bosworth who worked with her. She'll tell you I did. Robert, you were nowhere to be the, seen. The reality is, I was there in the front line to fend off the Army Corps of Engineers. all the quibbling, and what worries me is people watch and they see two people arguing. At the end of the day, we've got to restore bipartisan dialogue. We've got to restore respect for each other's points of view. I've done that. I've been recognized for it. Regrettably, George, you embraced Marjorie Taylor Greene, oh, the QAnon on. congresswoman. You, you put out a tweet with Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan I Omar, I never even and met these AOC. People. I never you, met these you people, George. You worked with the squad, the most anti-Semitic people running in now, the most George, conservatively Jewish district now, George, in America. Come you're just on, being, Robert. You're just being no, deceitful. You're being disingenuous. All right, guys, let's be I do want to make a point. You put out a tweet saying you were proud of Marjorie Taylor Greene and you liked her more than other Republicans. This is after the Republican leadership denounced her for anti-Semitism. I mean, if that's just so are, you, are you calling me anti-Semitic? No, like you, you also called no. me homophobic recently well, on your you social media. Homo I said you support no, homophobes. Not. That's Marjorie not true. Taylor I'm a gay married is. man, Robert. Marjorie, Having an honest conversation with Marjorie yourself again. Marjorie Taylor Greene, Matt Getz, these are leading homophobes in Congress. Yet you embrace them. You're proud of your affiliation with them. I took on the squad. I, I condemned no, them not. for their positions. No, you did not, and you know that really well. So look, let's move on because Why? We're having so it's much really fun. <laughs> so look, Mr. Zimmerman, as the anniversary of Superstorm Sandy approaches, do you believe we're in a situation where we can adjust climate change or the economy, or can we deal with both at the same time? We have no choice but to deal with both. I mean, I know the record Superstorm Sandy brought. In fact, we've seen since that time, we've seen violent, severe weather. 11 people died living in basement apartments in Queens about a year and a half ago. I'm a small business owner for 33 years. Small businesses are damaged. Homes are damaged. People's lives are destroyed over severe weather. George doesn't agree that the climate crisis is real. When he was asked that, he declined to answer that question. So we're, we're going to let him my answer point it to you now. Is we have to deal with, we have to deal with through the infrastructure bill, rebuilding our economy, and we also have to do that by creating clean energy union jobs, transitioning Mr. to a new Santos. economy. The reality is the climate cycle is, is forever changing, and we have to find a way to mitigate the effects of climate cycle in this country. And can, the we deal with the both? can we deal with we the can economy deal with both. and yes, climate we can. change? How? We just can't be extreme like the Democrat Party that wants to stop immediate fossil fuel exploration and, and convert to, in a very short window of time to renewable energy. I believe in the process no of, one of is renewable advocating energy. That, George. Of course you are. Look at the state of our country. It's three George. times three times you more expensive you still to heat your home this the climate winter. crisis is real. I am not you still saying will that. Not say You're putting words in my mouth no, you like just, you put just this entire campaign. Do my we, answer was... George, we'll we try can, it a third time. I'm not answering your questions. I'm answering Marsha's <laughs> questions, Robert. She asked if there's a oh, climate crisis. God. You won't acknowledge it. All right, let me, let's move on. We'll go, we'll go, we, I think we can get to one more topic. <laughs> Many people, Mr. Zimmerman, are demanding that President Biden shut the southern border. Do you agree? But also, should the migrants arriving here in New York City uh, some of them be brought to Long Island to your district. Well, look, we need a national policy to deal with this issue. We need a national agenda. Of course, we have to do more to secure our border. We have to do it by having greater surveillance at the legal checkpoints, greater, more personnel at the border, and we also have to deal with drone surveillance as well for our airports and harbors as well. But as far as those who come here to seek asylum, the most effective way to deal with that is to have a much greater, much bigger asylum process, more asylum judges, a greater infrastructure to deal with them. Because, frankly, People are coming here seeking asylum, which is their constitutional right, but they're here for, for years because the process is so long. Mr. So Santos, my point who's to you going is to pay for all of this? The reality is we need to shut the border and have a, a controlled environment at the southern border. It's a humanitarian crisis, Robert. Your party and you fail to see what that. What about our harbors and airports you, where fentanyl's coming in as well? Yeah, fentanyl's we coming in far view. more from the southern border and killing our youth we in our district. We should have to make a choice, Six, George. The other day this you is said, a national the other, urgency. The other day you said it was a scare tactic no, of mine and fear-mongering. 6,700 no, youth died in our country and, and this you don't year want to deal with and the overdoses seriously. of fentanyl. Of course I do. We no. need to secure the border should once any, and for all. Should, should many of the migrants coming into New York City be brought to Long Island? They should not. 
Why? We don't have the infrastructure, Marsha. That's a reality. Look, Where are we going to put them? The reality is... Should they go to Long Island? The reality is it's up to our local governments Answer to work with question. our... Answer question. I am answering the question. It's up to our local governments to work with our federal government on this issue. We did a national policy to address this. Most local places, some many, many local places can't afford, so, can't afford the... I don't have the infrastructure to take care of them. We're going to have to leave it right here. Um, we are going to have to leave it right here, but our conversation <laughs> but you're continues having so much fun. right after the show on our streaming network, CBS News New York. We'll be right back. <laughs> We're back for what we like to call exclamation point, a bonus conversation you'll see here on CBS News New York. So Vinny has a question about the economy. I'm retiring this year. What are you going to do for my wallet? Well, retirees are, are the ones having, you know, the hardest time in our country right now because inflation is a 10 percent pay cut. Right. And that's the landmark of the Biden administration and the House and the Senate with Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi. So what are you going to do for him? What, so what we need to do is we need to stop wasteful spending. Like I said earlier, we need to stop. We need to stop the war on energy independence in our country. All roads lead to energy. The higher cost of energy is hurting each and every American equally. Just on my way here to the studio, I was talking to a constituent. He says that his grocery bill went up from 200 bucks a week for a family of four to 400 bucks a week this year. George, we all know this the problem, reality. but the question is, how are you going to help that senior citizen? And the answer is... How are you going to help them? First of all, I'm going, to, I'm going to support lowering the cost of prescription drugs and support that law. George, you oppose it. That's I'm not going to, true. I'm going to support protecting Social Security. You support privatizing it. That was on your website. I'm going to stand up for, for the infrastructure, to bring dollars back in the infrastructure bill to protect his, his home value, to clean up our waters and bring, clean up our contaminated plumes. You oppose that infrastructure bill. There are real ways we can help that senior and other residents of our congressional district oh, navigate through the difficult times. By not voting for you to send another rubber stamp for Nancy Pelosi, to Washington and voting for me, who's going to stand up to Nancy I'm not Pelosi going to Congress. I'm not going to Congress. Yes, you are. Okay, okay, wait, yes, you are. Wait, I'm going wait, to represent wait, our district. Guys, you represent them for 30 years. Guys, Rachel has an existential question. Even better. What are you living for, really? What is your life all about? Is it about you? Because you're not going to be happy that way. Mr. Zimmerman. If I heard the question correctly, it was, what is my life going to be all about? What is my life all about? Is it all about you or... or... You know something? The greatest it's joy. It's existential. It's a great question. It's a really a very important question. The greatest joy I've had is with my family, watching their success, watching my, my, my business grow, and my faith. Those have given me a great sense of mission. And quite frankly, I take great pride in being a Democrat, being an out gay man, and seeing, seeing our country grow as it has, that I can be now a, a candidate for the United States Congress. So, it's really, not a, it's really not about me, and that's unusual for politicians to say. It's really about the people who give us love and support and who we can give love and support to. Mr. Santos. I've said this this entire race. This race isn't about me. It's not about Robert. It's about the people. Right. My entire career has been round, rounded about working with people, giving back to communities. I come from a very uh, humble beginning, and I'm very proud to be able to be in the position to do what I'm doing today. So it's always been about the people. I, I often take the clothes off my back to give to people. It's just it's not a metaphor for me. Uh, if you like my coat, here, you can have it kind of. Uh, can I have your coat? Uh, sure, you can have my coat. It's going to be big. You'll need a lot of tailoring, but sure, you can have it. You know, I don't mind. It's, it's like life is too short to be stuck on personal uh, grudges and everything. So I'm very proud of also an openly gay Republican running for the second time with unanimous support from my party, which just shows that this country has come to such a far length that we're so, we're, we're there. We've come to that point where this historic race can We have so much happen. farther to go. Got a long way to go, but I'm proud to be part of that so mission. So, Andrew wants to know this. If there was anyone living or dead, who would you want to go to dinner with? Santos. Oh, that's great. Marilyn Monroe. I just wanted to see if it was all the hype. I mean, she was, uh, I say this all the time. I think uh, she's an icon and she's been dead for decades. And I, I really would love to go to dinner with her. Okay, you get the chance. Who would you like to go, living or dead? Who would you like to go to dinner with? There's so many running through my head right now. I would have to say Abraham Lincoln absolutely comes to the forefront of my thoughts. And he's a Republican, George, but I do because <laughs> the wisdom and leadership he showed was so, so important for our nation and for our values as a country. Also, I'd include in that, if I could, Eleanor Roosevelt. She's always inspired me, how she overcame such, such pain in her life and such hurt in her life and went on to serve so many people throughout the world. So, Mr. Zimmerman, name one of your favorite family traditions. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. New Year's Eve, 
I hope my hope my nephews and I, my brother and sister in law, I get together in our sweats, watch a stupid holiday movie, some sort of stupid comical holiday movie, and eat the food that we shouldn't eat all year round. So that's the great thing. It begins with delicatessen. It goes into it goes into Haagen Dazs. It's always a staple. Usually <laughs> popcorn as well. <laughs> Mr. Santos, your favorite family tradition. Um, our favorite family tradition is just family time. We've always been, you know, it, it doesn't matter if it's a Tuesday night or if it's a Sunday night or if it's Christmas. Every moment we can get together, that's uh, kind of a downtime. It's sweatpants, pints of Haagen Dazs all over the place, and you we try. You agree on something? We try. Like it's the best ice cream you in the world. I'm not arguing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So here's the next question for you: Cats or dogs? I have four dogs, so dogs, team dogs. What kind of dogs? I have two golden retrievers who were rescued. I have a Maltese who was rescued, and I have a Yorkie who was a rescue. Mr. Zimmerman, cats I, or dogs? Dogs. I grew up with dogs. I, I wish I had one now in my life. I just treasure them and their companionship, and I love to go to the dog park and do it with, my, with the family dogs and see them in action. Most important part of my life, by the way, my dogs. <laughs> okay, Mr. Zimmerman, would you rather ask permission or apologize later? Ask permission. There are too many people who cut the, who take shortcuts, who try to feel they can outsmart, play, play around the rules. That's part of the problem in our society today. I grew up in a climate where you follow the rules, you challenge the rules, but you challenge them the proper way, but you ask for permission. Mr. I Santos. tend to follow the rules, but in today's climate, I think if we're going to be an innovative and if we're going to deliver results, we're going to have to start asking for forgiveness so we can get things done. Because if I'm going to go to Washington and ask for, for, for permission, I don't think much is going to get done. So I guess I'll just have to apologize to my party when I have to do things that are uh, you know, you know, something, in benefit you don't, you of don't the get, people. You don't get something done but with that strategy, George. It's not about being loud. It's about getting results, working in a bipartisan way. I've got you results by doing aisle. it that way in my career, that's, so that's it what, works. That's what makes the difference. Well, it this works. is not. It's so sad that you're in business and you feel you can break the rules to get oh, ahead. I never said That's I broke the, the rules. Problem. One more last question. Go ahead. What's the longest you've ever grown your hair? I had a ponytail uh, in eighth grade that was mid back. Really? Pretty long ponytail. I don't when did you cut it? I, I cut it in uh, when I went to high school because I said, uh, I think this is a little out of control. <laughs> Mr. Zimmerman, what's the longest you ever grew your hair? Seriously? Seriously. I'm just happy I still have hair. What are you talking about? <laughs> Good um, answer. Okay. Bottom line is, I never grew my hair that long. I had it very curly at one point in my life. Very curly. I'm just glad I still got some pepper to go with the salt, okay? <laughs> okay, we're going to leave it right there. Who knew so much could happen between then and now? We'll stay on every twist and turn. I'm Marcia Kramer. Thanks for watching this Encore presentation.